this is great. The, this is the momentum that we're, we are building on the diversity of these pathways and approaches to sustainability. So we're halfway through. That's four. Um, this is exciting because we're going to go from that large global scale and our next panelist is going to represent local and urban wood, uh, Paul Hodgkiss from uh, Scotland. So Paul, we'd love for you to take it away on local urban wood. Hi there, everybody. Can we, are we all, yeah, we're all good. Okay, well, as Mark said, storytelling is a really, really great way to get message across. Um, and today I would like to tell you a wee story. So I'm, I'm, I'm nobody in particular. However, I have got enormous energy and total belief, and this has helped to change some things better than I could possibly have imagined. Um, and as, as with lots in my life, um, inspiration is what kicks everything off. And my dad was a mountaineer, and he brought home with him his love for nature in picture and word. Trips away with him, walking through woodlands, ignited a passion in me that still grows today. Every timber surface that I reveal, I'm mesmerised and thrilled by its beauty. About 24 years ago, I machined into a piece of elm. I was actually making a gift. I was trying to win back the love of my life. It, it did work. Um, and uh, and I, was, I was completely blown away by this local homegrown species. And prime cuts of elm were available commercially, but it wasn't easy to source the characterful, rough and ragged rural elm. Its internal beauty is formed by unpredictable weather, pruning, nibbling animals, fences, treehouses and lost cat posters. I used to drive around and I was thinking to myself, I've seen trees getting removed from uh, roadsides, parks, and I was thinking, where the hell are they all going? And I found the source. So um, with the assistance of a good pal of mine in the architect department of the council, I donned my sustainability bandit mask and uh, we went out and we were pulling logs from piles about to be burnt. We were using all, we were using ash, elm, sycamore, poplar and others, half burnt, not burnt. Then I got a wee bit more organised. I joined some committees and organisations to promote the use of homegrown hardwoods. And we, we really did play a, a really important part in improving the commercial viability of the timber use. I met others involved in, from, from academics to sawmills. One in particular was to become a perfect example of, um, of success. A, a Jim Burley from Scottish Wood, which is a, a social enterprise company. Um, right now, actually, we're using elm, ash and lime from a relatively new small mill in Loch Awe. The trees have been felled for a new power line running from Loch Awe to Kintyre. So driven with a desire to show everyone how beautiful our pesky, no-value local rural timbers are, I've designed a brand that has found its way into public environments. We've inspired others and, and we've helped to create demand and today these trees are well looked after. They're, they're valued now and they're auctioned into a great system of local and rural mills and I'm, I'm truly delighted with the timber's success. I persuaded Glasgow City Council to donate its felled elm and sycamore in my bid to show the world how beautiful our local trees are in the design and production of metal trays, quakes and podiums for the Glasgow Commonwealth Games. All medal winners took a wee bit of Glasgow home to far-flung places in the form of a handmade quake. But I would like to focus on now um, the, the truly forgotten trees, on you know, wild-grown, on abandoned environments and waste grounds. One such area was earmarked for a project to build a new medical centre in Govan, the site of an ex-railway and aluminium works. Sixteen trees were marked for felling. Just poplar, willow... Alder, lime, Swedish white beam, and other species that are really just forgotten weed scrubland. I suggested that we use the timbers for the interior. So there was a total of seven miles taken to get the trees from site to workshop back in for fitting. We used 3.8 cubic metres. We saved £3,622 in timber purchase. And the site timbers disposal were zero. Education and awareness of these timbers was huge. All the wild-grown species um, that I have found out is that they're all very similar in colour and character, and this creates a broad spectrum of use and collectively a good volume. Can we look to educate, create business and start another drive to create value for these trees? Could we do this? Let's say, for example, if residential and commercial projects required felling to be legislated through planning law to use the wood. And, you know, there's some, there's some great um, potential from that, is that 
you know, residential housing market, um, they, they could have extra value with a selected number of bespoke houses on the site, which have got a really lovely story to tell because they've got their finishings made from these, these timbers. Um, there's timber processing businesses, there's apprenticeships, um, sustaining a future of traditional crafts and skills, and of course, local and rural employment. And, you know, these wee trees, one small tree of a relatively nondescript species, not the regular known ones. Um, you know, this wee guy, they could, they could produce 140 linear metres, say for example, of a skirting or a facing. And being of all the, this, this kind of, this general colouring, you put them all together and you get a beautiful uh, overall visual of, of nature within the, the, the building in question. Um, and uh, so, as I say, I hope that my story um, can reach people. I believe there's people listening who are probably in a position to action some of these potentials. Um, and I hope this reaches you. So thank you very much for listening. Wonderful, Paul. Thank you so much. That was great. And, you know, the, the scale of, of local urban uh, wood from local and urban forests is immense. And so I think this is a, just a powerful uh, story to to help everyone look at those uh, resources and say, what is it, uh, what, is, what is available within our city? And, you know, the city of Montreal, for example, with the ash borer beetle had, I think it was 250,000 ash trees that had to be uh, removed. Uh, that's a lot of wood. So there's a lot of wood in cities and yeah. incorporating that has, has got enormous potential. Thanks for that inspiration. Um, we're now gonna to go to Paul Twain, who's going to talk to- Gabron and other commissioners in helping to drive sustainable development in London. So um, today um, I thought I would illustrate the, the wood reuse pathway um, and, and take a city perspective 